Hi, my name is Jennifer McAllister. I'm a board certified general surgeon and fellowship trained uh, breast oncology surgeon uh, at Pardee Hospital in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Today we're going to be talking about breast cancer and breast cancer prevention. Some breast cancer statistics, things to know, is that breast cancer mostly affects women. Only about 1% of breast cancers diagnosed will be diagnosed in men. It is a very common cancer in women. About one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. How are breast cancers detected in their earliest stages? Mammograms, mammograms, mammograms. Mammograms save lives because they find breast cancer before we would ever know that it's there. Non-modifiable risk for breast cancer. Things that we can't change. Things that are the highest risks for breast cancer. Being a woman, aging, and having dense breast tissue, and then our family history. All four of these things are things that we cannot change, we cannot do anything about. Things that we can modify that give us a risk for breast cancer. Overall, these are the things that we do to be healthy um, for any other type of disease. So things that we can modify. Maintaining a healthy weight. The reason this is important uh, for women is that the more body fat we have, the more circulating hormones that we are going to have even after menopause. And this increases our risk for breast cancer. So maintaining a healthy weight is important in reducing our risk for breast cancer. It's also important in reducing our risk for other cancers and heart attacks and strokes. Other things that help reduce the risk of breast cancer, exercising um, about 150 minutes per week. Now this doesn't have to be things like boot camp or CrossFit. It can be a simple walking program, but working up a sweat and getting your heart rate elevated um, 150 minutes per week is important. Eating a healthy diet, again, the same things we do to um, decrease our risk of heart attacks and strokes, these are the same dietary measures we should take uh, to decrease our risk of breast cancer. Moderate alcohol use, uh, this means one drink or less per day um, helps decrease our risk for breast cancer. And of course, smoking. Uh, smoking is a risk for breast cancer, but all other cancers, as well as heart attacks and strokes. So these are the things that we have control over um, to decrease our risk for breast cancer. Again, mammograms are very important in finding breast cancer early before we would ever know that it's there. Uh, when we detect breast cancer in its earliest stages, uh, it is much easier to take care of and reduces our risk in needing other things such as chemotherapy. There are multiple guidelines uh, for mammograms, when they should be done, um, who they should be done in, at what age should we start and stop them. This can be extremely confusing. So it's important for each patient to talk to their primary care physician to sort of have an idea of their risk um, and in turn when they should start having mammograms. My overall recommendation would be to start having mammograms at age 40 and have them on a yearly basis. Age to stop mammogram, hard to know. Every 90 year old isn't the same. And so some 90 year olds should have continued mammogram screening, um, some shouldn't. 3D mammography, also called tomosynthesis, is important for patients with dense breast tissue. Now, about 40% of women have dense tissue. So this exam is important in a pretty significant uh, portion of the population uh, that are having screening mammograms. Screening mammograms mean that we don't have a problem. We're looking to detect a, a problem before we know that it's there. That's the reason for doing screening mammograms. Additional images for 3D mammograms are um, in a plane. So traditional images with a 2D mammogram are done in two planes. Uh, the first is with the breast in compression, um, sort of up and down, and the next is um, in compression from side to side. The 3D mammograms leave the patient in compression, but it has almost an aperture or an arm that swings around and uh, takes slices of images, and those are composed into a 3D picture, which then the radiologist can look at and is able to see small masses in dense breast tissue. 3D mammograms are not as important, um, but it still can be helpful in patients that don't have uh, dense tissue. The advent of 3D mammograms has reduced callbacks or patients needing to come back for additional imaging 
by 30%. So they have also decreased um, our need for additional mammogram pictures uh, when we use them as screening mammograms. Again, they increase the detection of small masses in dense tissue. They do have a slightly higher radiation dose, um, but not enough that we would consider it a problem or a risk factor for other cancers. Breast ultrasound can be used for screening or diagnostic purposes. Again, screening means that we're not having any problems, we're looking for problems before we know um, they are there. Uh, what we use for screening ultrasounds um, can be a whole breast ultrasound called an automated breast ultrasound, which uses a paddle as a detection device. Um, the other way that it can be done is with a technologist holding the ultrasound probe and uh, moving along the breast to obtain images. Um, the advantages to ABUS or whole breast or 3D ultrasound is that it does, again, create a 3D picture of the breast. It's automated, so it takes human error out of the picture. The technologist takes a paddle and positions it on the breast, and then the ultrasound probe moves over that paddle, and then we get images of the entire breast. The computer takes those images and composes them into a 3D picture. A whole breast ultrasound is important, again, in women with dense tissue, 40% of women, to help detect small masses that even 3D mammograms may miss. Um, they can be done at the same time as the mammograms, and they need to be done together. So we can't replace a mammogram with an ultrasound. Uh, they detect different things. Mammograms detect calcifications, which can be the earliest sign of breast cancer. Ultrasounds don't necessarily detect these, and that's why it's important in women with dense tissue to have both studies done as a matter of screening. Breast MRI is a specialized diagnostic exam. It can also be used for screening in patients with high risk. It does not use any radiation or ultrasound. It uses a very powerful magnet combined with a gadolinium dye. This dye helps detect small cancers because cancers have a different blood flow. So the dye is injected by an IV and the MRI images are obtained um, both before and after the dye injection. Cancers and abnormalities have a certain blood flow and what we call enhancement on MRI, and that allows us to see those um, abnormalities on MRI a little bit better. It highlights them. MRIs are extremely sensitive, so they are not appropriate for use in everyone. We use them as screening tools in patients that are considered high risk. Patients that are considered high risk are patients that have over a 20% lifetime risk of breast cancer. There are multiple risk models that can be used. We use here at Pardee the uh, Tyre Cusick model, and it's very comprehensive. Um, our model that we use takes into consideration a patient's age, weight, height, breast density, previous biopsies, family history, and reproductive history. So that gives us a, a good picture of overall risk. And again, anyone over 20% is considered high risk. What we do differently in patients with a high risk for breast cancer is that we do add the breast MRI as a yearly screening tool. So we don't get rid of mammograms. Um, mammograms are still done once a year, and breast MRI is also done once a year. We space these apart by six months so that the patient is having imaging every six months, um, alternating breast MRI and mammogram. The idea is not, again, to prevent breast cancer, but to find it in its earliest stages when it's easy to treat. Some innovations um, in breast cancer care over the past several years have been the advent of uh, 3D mammogram or tomosynthesis. Again, helps us detect very small cancers, even in dense tissues. Um, ABUS, or the automated whole breast ultrasound, again, um, useful in, in, in dense tissue. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy, or giving chemotherapy before surgery. When we used to treat breast cancer, certain cancers that we knew would need chemotherapy that chemotherapy would happen after surgery. We oftentimes give that chemotherapy before surgery now, which allows us to take some patients who would not be a candidate for a lumpectomy um, to be a candidate for a lumpectomy. In other words, some patients came with large tumors and they would have to have a mastectomy. 
Some of those patients now, if they're candidates for chemotherapy, we give that chemotherapy ahead of surgery in hopes of shrinking the tumor enough to allow for a lumpectomy to be done instead of making a mastectomy necessary. Genetic testing of tumors. We do genetic testing on most patients uh, with breast cancer looking for genes that may have caused the breast cancer. But genetic testing of tumors or genomic testing of tumors is different. It's gives us an idea of the tumor's aggressiveness. Again, it helps us narrow down who is really going to benefit from chemotherapy and who isn't. Um, and so this has allowed some patients to not have to have chemotherapy who in the past may have needed it. The recurrent scores have allowed us to narrow down who will really benefit from chemotherapy. Uh, so that patients that in the past we thought may have benefited from chemotherapy, now we have a better idea. These um, genomic tests on the breast cancers have to be ordered by the medical oncologist and they don't give us any idea about the patient's um, genetic makeup and they can only be done in hormone sensitive or estrogen positive tumors. Improved radiation techniques. Um, this has allowed us uh, to do breast radiation without injuring the heart or lungs, um, which obviously makes radiation much safer than it had been in the past. Improved and expanded reconstruction options. Now options range from fat grafting, removing fat from one place uh, by liposuction and injecting it into um, a defect from a lumpectomy cavity, um, to moving tissue uh, from one part of the body into a mastectomy space to create uh, a new breast mound or reconstruction with an implant-based reconstruction after mastectomy. Patients now have a very wide range of choices when it comes to uh, breast reconstruction, both after lumpectomy and mastectomy. And we also have improved surgical techniques which allow us to take out less tissue at the time of lumpectomy than we had in the past. Thank you for taking time to watch this and please, please, please have your mammograms if you have questions or concerns. Uh, you can call the Breast Center at Pardee. Uh, you can also call to schedule a mammogram.